The Reno Air Races are fast. And they're getting speeds up around 525, 535. Dangerous. There's a lot less margin for error in the air racing than there is in car racing. And loud. We have 115 race aircraft. In the middle of all the mayhem is the Airbus Shifty Pierce. I'm both the composer and a conductor. So I write the schedule and everything that goes on all week, start to the end, it's my responsibility to, to choreograph that. The best pilots in the country have been going wingtip to wingtip over the Nevada desert for almost 50 years. But lately they've been living in the shadow of the Red Bull air racing circuit. Mike Mangold flies both. We're racing in a pack out here. It's like being on a go-kart track or in a NASCAR race with several other competitors on the course at the same time, and that's the big variable. Whereas in the Red Bull Air Race, you're like a ski racer. You're on a track all by yourself. You know the line you want to fly. It's kind of just you and the track. With Red Bull, you worry about the track. It's full of hairpin turns and reversals. At Reno, you worry about the traffic. As we're you know, over 500 miles an hour, we're coming up on somebody that's 400 or 350. So we're coming up on them very quick, and I see them a half mile ahead of me, and I'm there in two or three seconds. So I have to make a decision, am I going to go high, wide, or how am I going to get around them? The course is a simple oval, smaller for the slower planes and bigger for the faster ones. The jets run six laps around a 14-kilometer loop. The course is marked with what are called pylons, but really they're just old oil drums turned upside down on telephone poles. Judges stand at each one, looking straight up to make sure nobody cuts a corner. We had a couple close ones, but uh, and they were all legit. You know, in a Red Bull Air Race, you see us walk through our lines and, and we're trying to figure out what we're going to do. And But here, I have no idea. I mean, how I know the line I would like to fly on this course out here, but oftentimes when you get in traffic, you can't fly that line. We like it to pass on the straightaways. It's, more, it's safer, but it's not a requirement. Passing on corners means a choice between taking a longer outside path or ducking inside and flying into the other pilot's blind spot. If you've got low on him, he's not going to be able to see you, and that can be dangerous because he might do something and he doesn't know you're out there. Three years ago, everybody involved was reminded just how dangerous this kind of flying really is. In 2007, we had two fatal accidents as part of the races. We had a jet that got into some jet wash and really wasn't where he was supposed to be and ended up rolling inverted and couldn't get out of it and crashed. Uh, very, very tragic. And then we had a uh, Formula One, two racers that had a mid-air. One of the aircraft was able to get down on the ground, but the other aircraft crashed and the pilot died. These are the guys that put Shifty's plan into action. That includes dealing with constant emergencies. You have to understand that having a mayday is a matter of routine, as routine as it can be, of course. It gets very busy. Uh, we could have eight racers in the pattern at any one time. We could have aircraft taxiing to uh, go take off. We could have performers staging, getting ready to go. Each taxi takeoff and landing is carefully tracked, a job made more complicated by the fact that there are so many different types of planes, ranging from tiny home-built biplanes to million-dollar racing jets. Dave Morse has been competing here for 30 years, and he's pretty much flown them all. I've uh, done 204 races so far. There'll be obviously more by the end of the week. Dave's day job is helping to design and test new planes for the Rocket Racing League a group that hopes one day to have rocket-powered planes racing head-to-head. -head. But this week, he's piloting Polar Bear, a P-51 Mustang with a chilling history. This airplane on its way to Russia, going up through the Aleutian chain, in a snowstorm, crashed against a mountain and uh, killed the pilot that was ferrying the airplane out. That was in 1944. It's now rebuilt and more powerful than ever. Polar Bear flies in the Unlimited class, the most famous division of the Reno races. Those aren't stock engines. Those are very, very expensive race engines. That those airplanes fly a lot faster than they were originally designed to fly. And they have special cooling. In some cases, burn special fuel, not your basic av gas. And that's why they can get up speeds approaching actually over 500 miles an hour on the straightaway. Combine that much speed with the best pilots around and what you end up with is the fastest, most exciting motorsport on the planet. <laughs>